with extra backup. Alexei is a member of the development team at Bacona and is the core developer of Bacona server and extra backup. And this talk will cover basic operations such as tasking full and inc incremental backups, restoring from backups and setting up re replication slaves, as well as advanced and recently added features such as streaming and compressed backups, parallel operations and partial backups. Alexei? Yes, um, thanks. Uh, so hello um, everybody, good morning. Um, I'm a software engineer at uh, Percona, working mostly on uh, Percona Extra Backup and Percona Server. So I'm the guy responsible for most um, new features and bug fixes implemented in Extra Backup over the last uh, year and a half. Uh, I think I'm also responsible for a couple of new bugs. Uh, and in this talk, I'm going to provide a, a technical overview of the uh, features available in Extra Backup and explain basic use cases. Uh, so, uh, what is Percona Extra Backup? It's an open source hot backup utility for MySQL. And MySQL in this uh, context means three most popular MySQL flavors. There is the MySQL server itself, which is provided by Oracle. Percona server, which is a MySQL based server developed by Percona. And uh, MariaDB, which is another MySQL uh, based server developed by Monte Program. Uh, for every project, Extra Backup supports basically all versions that are currently uh, being used and supported by the corresponding vendors. So the standard, for the standard MySQL server, uh, Extra Backup supports for standard MySQL server and Percona server, we support, support all versions from 5.0 to 5.5. And in MySQL 5.1, there are basically two versions of InnoDB storage engine, uh, the plugin and the built-in, uh, and they're both supported. And for MariaDB, um, we support version, uh, versions 5.1 and 5.5. Uh, there are no serious problems with supporting versions 5.2 and 5.3, but there's a minor uh, version detection bug and extra backup, uh, and uh, those versions are just basically not detected correctly, which is of course a minor thing to fix. I'm going to fix this bug soon, so if you need, if you're using MariaDB uh, 5.2 or 5.3 and need, uh, sup need it supported by extra backup, you can expect it in the near future. Uh, as you know, MySQL supports uh, multiple storage engines. Um, so here's a list of uh, storage engines supported by Extra Backup. Uh, it supports HOT, that is non-blocking backups for InnoDB and ExtraDB. ExtraDB is an improved version of InnoDB developed by Percona. Uh, it also supports MyISOM, Archive, and CSV uh, storage engines. But since those storage engines are not transactional, uh, the only way to create a consistent backup of those tables uh, is a temporary read log. I will be talking more about this later. And speaking of other storage engines available for, for MySQL, um, we haven't tested them, but they may work if they support flush tables with read log. That is, if they can be temporarily locked for queries to create a consistent backup. Now, um, speaking of supported platforms, um, we are pretty much focused on Red Hat because that's what the majority of our customers uses. Uh, we test and regularly use extra backup on Red Hat and derive distributions like CentOS or Oracle Linux. But we also have a big user base on uh, Debian and Ubuntu, and that's why we also run tests on those distributions and provide binary packages for them. Uh, we are not aware of any uh, problems with other Linux distributions, but we do not provide any binary packages for them. So if you use anything other than Red Hat based distribution or Debian based distribution, uh, you have to build from source code. Uh, we also made an experimental Windows release. Uh, we get requests for Windows support quite frequently, probably because some people prefer to uh, test the tool on their laptops or desktops before putting it, into, putting it into production. Uh, so, um, the Windows binaries for extra, back, for extra backup are known to work, uh, but they have not been tested in production environment, hence the, hence the experimental status. Um, we're also going to provide uh, regular releases for Solaris and Mac OS X, because we get, we get requests to support them every now and then. And uh, regarding FreeBSD support, um, we used to provide FreeBSD binaries in the past, but there was like uh, one FreeBSD download per year, so we decided to abandon this platform. On the other hand, uh, extra backup should work on FreeBSD if you build it from source code. We just don't test it as a part of our release cycle and don't provide precompiled binaries anymore. 
Okay, now let me explain why you need extra backup in the first place. There's why can't you just copy files with CP or rsync or your favorite file manager? Uh, the reason is that the way database servers work with data files uh, is much more complicated as compared to most other software. A database server usually uses both memory and disk storage to store data, and data on disk is usually not in sync with data in memory for performance reasons. Uh, let's take an ADB for example. Uh, when, when a query uh, uh, updates data, it is not immediately, uh, it is only updated in memory. It is not immediately updated on disk. The update uh, on disk may happen, may happen sometime later, and instead of updating data, NDB makes a record uh, in the redo log. But why do we need redo logs? Uh, we need redo logs for crash recovery. At some point, the system may crash, and if it crashes, the updates written to memory, but not to disk, are lost. Uh, but we still have them in redo logs. So when NDB starts after a crash, it performs the recovery procedure. Uh, the procedure is to apply records from redo logs to data files. That is, we basically redo updates that made it only to memory, but not to disk, before the crash. And uh, the idea of backup uh, is very similar to what InnoDB does on recovery. That is, uh, during the backup process, uh, we are copying data from disk to backup storage, and at the same time, uh, we are following redo log updates and copying them to the extra backup log file. Which means, uh, by the end of the backup process, the extra backup log file uh, will contain all updates to InnoDB tables made while the backup was in progress. So we can use that log uh, to replay all those changes to get a consistent snapshot of NDB tables corresponding to the point in time when the backup had finished. And this process of applying updates from the extra backup log file to the backup files is what extra backup uh, does on the second stage. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, this stage is also sometimes called uh, preparing a backup, because after applying uh, the log, the backup becomes uh, consistent and is ready to, to be restored. So the backup logic in extra backup is essentially identical to the um, NSB recovery procedure, uh, which also means that we can reuse NSB recovery code and that's what extra backup does. Uh, during the second stage, during the pre prepare, uh, when preparing the backup, it essentially starts a mini NADB instance to perform recovery. Um, now let's look at the distribution structure of extra backup. So all binary packages contain the following files. We have uh, three extra backup binaries, extra backup, extra backup 5.1, and extra backup 5.5. Uh, these binaries handle everything related to NSB data files. That is uh, copying re NSB redo logs and data files and verifying their integrity during the backup process by calculating checksums for NSB pages. That is, extra backup will refuse to uh, create a backup of corrupted NSB tables. And these binaries also handle, uh, also apply logs on the second uh, backup stage. The reason why there are three binaries is that different NDB versions uh, may have differences in the on-disk format, on this data format. So um, uh, the extra backup binary handles um, is compatible with uh, ExtraDB in Percona Server 5.1 and NDB plugin in MySQL 5.1. Uh, the extra backup 5.1 binary handles data files created with the built-in uh, NDB version in MySQL 5.1 and also the older versions like Percona Server 5.0 or MySQL 5.0. And finally, extra backup 5.5 can handle data files created with versions uh, uh, version 5.5 of Percona Server or MySQL Server. And uh, then we have in the backup X, which is a Perl script, and it's a wrapper around extra backup binaries, which handles everything else, like coordinating with the MySQL Server to detect its version, for example, its version, for example, and uh, select the appropriate uh, extra backup binary. It also copies known NDB uh, data files like MySQL tables, for example, and FRM files. Uh, and it also backs up various meta information uh, from the server, like uh, binary log position. Uh, and there's also the, XB, the XB stream binary um, that should be used with streaming backups. I will cover this later. Now, um, let's look into the backup process in more detail. But first, let me explain uh, what, what has to be backed up. So every MySQL data directory uh, contains a bunch of various files created by different components of the server, 
uh, for example, IBD files contain NDB tables, and there is uh, IB, uh, IB data one, which contains the NDB system table space. Then there are FRM files containing table definitions. There's information about the table structure. Uh, my ISM files are stored on disk as uh, MYD files containing data and MYI files containing indexes. Uh, and even if you don't uh, use MySM to store your data, which you really shouldn't, you still have MySM data. You still have the MySQL database containing system MySQL server tables. Uh, they're, uh, they're stored as MySM tables. And there may also be uh, additional files like trigger definitions and tables created by other storage engines like archive or CSV. So to get a consistent uh, backup, we want to have a snapshot of all those files at a certain point in time. So here's the uh, basic logic of, of a backup. When the um, backup X script is used, it performs the, the following actions. Uh, first of all, it starts the extra backup binary, which in turn starts to copy the NDB log and NDB tables. After the extra backup binary has finished copying NDB data files, it performs the, the following actions. It connects to the server and issues the flush tables with read log statement to log all tables and prevent, prevent any further updates to the database. After that, it copies FRM files and non-transactional tables. Then it records the binary log position. And finally, it, it unlocks uh, tables to, to allow table updates. Uh, now let's take a closer look at the flush tables with read log statement and steps three through six. So we copy FRM files and non-transactional tables after we lock tables with read log. And we also store uh, binary, the binary log position uh, when the tables are, are locked. And what it means is that after the flash, ta uh, the flash tables with read log statement, no clients can execute queries that change any data. Uh, and the statement also closes all tables, which means it first has to wait for all, for, for all uh, currently uh, executing queries to finish. Uh, the statement also blocks all commit statements for the same reason, uh, that is to prevent any updates to data. But why do we have to do that? Uh, why do we have uh, to lock all tables and, and prevent any updates to them? Uh, let's consider the following case. Uh, we have to copy many FRM files. And while, while we are copying uh, table five, some client modify, modifies table one with an altered table. That is, it changes the FRM file corresponding to table, table one. And if we allow that, uh, we get an inconsistent backup because the backup will contain the old definition for table one while the actual data may correspond to the new table structure. Uh, so with flush tables with read log, uh, all DDL and all DML statements will be blocked until we complete the backup and unlock all, uh, unlock all tables using the unlock tables statement. And it may be obvious, but um, the same problem applies to non-transactional uh, tables like MyISM, not just to FRM files. MyISM doesn't have redo logs, so a non-blocking copy of MyISM tables may result in an inconsistent backup. And that's why we have to copy MyISM tables under a global read log. Now, um, let's talk about the basic usage of extra backup. So the most basic way to, um, to create a backup is to use the InnoBackupX script and specify the destination directory to, to store backup data. InnoBackupX also accepts many uh, command line options. The most frequently used options are defaults file, uh, which accepts a path to a server configuration file. In particular, it may be used to specify a non-standard data directory location because extra backup assumes the data directory to be a var slash, slash lib slash mysql by default. So if your server is configured with a different location, you need to get to, to let extra backup know by uh, passing the server configuration file with the default file option. You may also want to specify connection parameters that extra backup should use to connect to the server, like user, password, host, or socket. Now, um, let's take a Closer, uh, let's take a look at uh, the second backup stage that is preparing uh, the backup by applying transaction log. Uh, you can execute the stage by invoking in the backup X with the apply log option. And you also need to specify a backup location. 
In this mode, in a backup X uses the extra backup binary to start a mini SB instance and essentially perform data recovery by applying log records from the extra backup log file to the data files. So, um, yes. And this is the, the most uh, basic uh, usage scenario for extra backup. Any questions so far? No questions? Okay, and by the way, if, if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to interrupt me and ask at any time. I don't mind doing it more interactively. Okay, so now let's talk about um, streaming backups. So far I've been talking about uh, local backups, which allow you to get a local copy of data that is on the same host or a remote host um, using an NFS mount, for example. So the idea behind streaming backups is to make it possible to manage uh, backup, backup data using the Unix pipeline mechanism. So one could, for example, pipe the backup stream, uh, backup stream to a gzip utility or bzip2 to compress it, and then uh, pipe, this, uh, uh, pipe the resulting stream to SSH to transfer it to, to a remote host, for example, and then possibly uh, uncompress it on the remote host, and, and so on. So we introduced the streaming backups functionality, which is unique to, unique to extra backup. It is not supported by other physical backup solutions for MySQL, like MySQL Enterprise Backup, for example. And it works like this. In the streaming backup mode, in the backup X, basically executes the same steps that it does in the local backup mode. But instead of storing the files locally, both in the backup X and extra backup and the extra backup binary uh, send the results to the standard output using the tar file format. So the resulting data stream can be unpacked with the, with the tar utility. And even though the, the basic steps are the same as for a local backup, uh, streaming data dynamically implies some challenges with how this process internally. I will cover this later. Now, um, to, start the uh, to start the streaming backup, you have to pass the uh, double dash stream equals star option to in the backup X. Uh, you also have to specify a directory. And even though extra backup will not use that directory to store data files, uh, as it would do with the local backup, uh, it will still use that directory to store temporary files. For example, a temporary copy of the, of the transaction log file. So the directory part is still required. So as I said, uh, you can use the standard tar utility to unpack files from the stream generated by extra backup and the streaming backup mode. The only important difference here from a normal tar usage is the dash i option. This option tells uh, the tar utility to ignore end of file markers uh, in the stream. It is required because the tar stream uh, generated by extra backup is basically uh, is produced by merging multiple individual uh, tar files together. So there may be end of file markers in the middle of the stream. And if you don't specify this option, uh, tar will stop processing the stream after the first file. So you'll, so you'll en end up with an incomplete backup. So um, uh, here's a few interesting use cases for streaming backups. First of all, you can compress your backups with external utilities like gzip or bzip2. You can also encrypt backups using OpenSSL, for example. Uh, you can also do remote backups by sending the stream to SSH and possibly unpacking it simultaneously on the remote host uh, with the TAR utility. And you can utilize the power of the Unix pipeline mechanism by combining all these use cases together. For example, this, this command uh, on the bottom of the slide uh, creates a, a compressed, remote, encrypted backup. So that's how streaming backups can be used. Questions? Okay. Um, now let's talk about uh, incremental backups. An incremental backup is a copy of changes in the data since a specified point in time. So what in a backup X does in the incremental backup mode is basically the same steps that it do for a normal backup, except that instead of copying the entire NSB tables, it only copies pages changed since a specified point in time. And the, the mechanism uh, which is used to implement incremental backups is based on the LSN concept. LSN stands for log sequence number, and a very simplistic definition of it is that it's a number of uh, it's a number that defines a point in time when a page was last updated. So what extra backup does when creating an incremental backup is it is it scans all data files and copies all pages with log sequence numbers greater than the specified LSN. 
So by using an incremental backup with LSN of the last full backup, for example, you can copy all changes since the last full backup. It is also worth mentioning that uh, this method of doing incremental backups works only for NDB tables. For my ISM, tab for my ISM tables or other uh, non-transactional tables, extra backup creates full table copies in the incremental mode. So here's the basic command to start an incremental backup. As you can see, in addition to the incremental backup directory, you have to use the uh, double dash incremental option and the incremental base dir option and pass a full backup directory as its argument. The full backup directory is required to determine the starting log sequence number for the changes that should be included into the incremental backup. Uh, extra backup reads that value from the extra backup checkpoints file, which is stored in every uh, backup directory created by extra backup. So this uh, two LSN value is, in this example, is the log sequence number of the latest modification included in the, uh, in the full backup. So when you pass the full backup directory with uh, incremental base dir option, extra backup will, will read two LSN from this file and use it as a starting point for incremental backup. Now, um, in, order, in order to restore from an incremental backup, you should first merge the incremental changes to the corresponding full backup and then restore the updated data set. Uh, merging incremental changes is a two-step process. First, you have to prepare the full backup by using the apply log option and passing the full backup directory. But uh, an important difference from uh, when, uh, when preparing a full backup before merging an incremental one is that you also have to use the uh, redo only option. Uh, the reason is that normally extra backup also rolls back and commit a transaction uh, when preparing a backup. But when you're going to apply an incremental backup later, transactions that were not committed at the full backup time are already taken into account in the incremental changes. That is, uh, no matter if, uh, if incremental backup will come, uh, if, uh, if those transactions will, uh, was, uh, if those transactions were rolled back or committed, uh, the updated page pages will be, in the will be in the incremental backup. So you have to skip the rollback phase when preparing a full backup by using the redo only option. And once the full backup is prepared, you can then merge the incremental changes by passing the incremental dir option to in the backup X. Uh, and pass the uh, incremental backup directory. Question? Yes, uh, sure. Can this be combined with the stream mode? Because uh, the, the backup directory has to look like this. Yes, uh, well, uh, streaming incremental backups uh, were, not, uh, were not possible with extra backup 1.6, but uh, we fixed this so you can do streaming incremental backups, backups in extra backup to zero. I will, uh, I will get to it. Later. Okay, so now let's talk about the table export feature of extra backup. It is sometimes necessary to restore individual NDB tables from a full backup to another server instance, or maybe to the same server instance. And uh, restoring individual MySM tables to another server is simple, right? You can just copy uh, MySM files to, to the server. And that's it. Uh, restoring the full backup to, to another server is also uh, easy. You can just copy the full backup directory to another server instance, and then you can start the server with this new data directory, and that's it. But uh, if, if, if you only need to specific uh, NDB tables to be stored, you can't just copy them. Instead, you should use the table export feature provided by extra backup, and then you can use the improved table import feature available in Percona server. So those features are work in combination. Uh, and this, of course, is only possible with multiple NDB table spaces. That is, with the uh, uh, NDB file per table option enabled. Because if a table resides in the shared system table space, there is no way you can extract it and copy it to another uh, server. You can only copy the entire system table space. But uh, why does it have to be that complex? Why can't you just uh, copy a table that is an IBG file to another server? Uh, the reason is metadata. As you know, NDB stores uh, meta information describing uh, tables, table spaces, indexes, and so on, in a series of internal tables called data dictionary. 
and that meta information, uh, the data dictionary uh, uh, resides in the system table space. So uh, the information in the data dictionary must match what's, uh, whatever is actually stored in IBD files. If the information in the data dictionary and an IBD file don't match, NHB will co complain about data, data corruption and crash with all kinds of scary messages. So what the table export feature of extra backup does is it dumps index metadata from every IBD file on the prepare stage and stores it in a special file called, uh, which, which has the .exp extension. And then Percona server uses that dot, .exp file when importing the table to update pointers and IDs in both the uh, data dictionary and the data files. This is also applied to MySQL server or MariaDB because you're expertly uh, talking about Percona server at this point. Yes. Um, the improved uh, table import functionality is not available in the standard MySQL server from Oracle, and I'm not sure if MariaDB has, uh, has merged this functionality from Percona server. Um, I have to check the code to answer so that. After all, this not supported on MySQL Yes. Um, yes, I will, uh, I will be talking about the, My, the standard MySQL server in a couple of slides. So here's an example of the table export feature in action. Uh, the, the only difference with the normal backup uh, procedure, uh, no, backup prepare procedure, is the uh, double dash export option, uh, which you have to pass to extra backup. And when that option is present, extra backup reports that it's also creating .exp files for uh, every table, like customer.exp in this example. And it also prints index information that will be stored in that file. In this example, the table had four indexes, including the primary key, and it also prints IDs and root page offsets for each index. So this is basically the information that will be stored in the .exp file. Now, uh, to import uh, the table exported with the export option, uh, you must be running Percona server, because as I said, the, the, um, uh, the improved import functionality is not available in the standard MySQL server. So with Percona server, you can restore the table either to the same server instance uh, where the backup was created, or a different server instance. And in case you are restoring it to, in, to a different server, you have to first create uh, a table with the same definition to create an FRM file for the table. Uh, then you should disable foreign key checks by setting foreign key checks uh, variable to zero. It's only required if you, if you have foreign, uh, foreign key constraints referencing, referencing that table. Otherwise, you can skip the step. Uh, you should then drop, uh, drop the existing table space by using alter table discard uh, table space uh, statement. Uh, then you can copy the IBD file from the backup directory to the data directory on the server. Uh, after that, you can, import it, you can import it to the server using the alter table import table space statement. But before that, make sure you have enabled the improved import feature uh, uh, functionality if it's not already set in the server, configura server configuration file. Uh, this feature is controlled with the NDB uh, import table from extra backup option. Uh, in Percona Server 5.5 or in ZB Expand Import in Percona Server 5.1. And after the import table space uh, statement finishes, uh, the table is ready to be used and you can enable the, the foreign key checks back. Now, uh, what about the standard MySQL server? Uh, as I said, the improved table imp import functionality is only available uh, is not available in the standard MySQL. So the, the only thing you can do with the standard MySQL server is to restore a table to the same server instance where the table was created. Otherwise, uh, table metadata will be different. And another serious limitation is that between taking a backup and the import operation, there must be no DDL operations like drop table or create table or truncate or alter uh, on this table. So, for example, to import the customer table in this specific limited case, uh, the procedure looks like this. Uh, you, run, uh, you run alter table uh, customer discard, discard table space. Uh, then you copy customer IBD from the backup directory to the database directory. And then you should run alter table customer uh, import table space to import this table. But in this limited case, there is when restoring to the same server and there have been no DDL operations on the table, you don't even need the, the export feature of extra backup. You can just take the IBD file and copy it to the database directory. So that's how the, the export feature works. Uh, the next uh, important and frequently used feature of extra backup is partial backups. 
uh, it allows you to back up individual tables or schemas to, uh, as opposed to backing up the entire data set. And once again, it requires multiple NDB table spaces. There is NDB file per table enabled in case uh, you, uh, you need to do partial backups of NDB tables. Because if all NDB tables are in the shared uh, table space, uh, you can only back up that table space as a whole. You cannot extract individual tables from it. Which is another hint that if you need some flexibility with managing your backups and NDB tables, you should consider enabling multiple table spaces. Uh, NDB multiple table, table spaces. Now, uh, restoring from a partial backup is absolutely the same procedure as restoring individual tables from a full backup, which means the, um, uh, the restore procedure has the same limitations with the st standard MySQL server. You can only restore to the same server instance where the backup was taken, and there, may, there must be no DDL operations on affected tables. And so those limitations do not apply to performance server when using the improved table input feature. Um, there are many ways to specify which tables or databases you would like to include uh, to a partial backup. It also depends on whether you're using the Indo Backup X script or the extra backup binary, um, which is a bit unfortunate, but they're going to fix this in the future by merging Indo Backup X and uh, extra backup into a single binary. But for now, uh, you have the following options. Uh, when using the in the backup X script and creating a streaming backup, you can specify databases and tables with the du uh, double, uh, double dash databases option, which accepts a space separated list of databases. And for each databases, you can optionally specify a table, a table name after the dot. For example, using employees uh, space sales dot orders uh, as, the, as its argument, uh, will um, will make in the backup X uh, backup the entire employees database and only the orders table from the sales database. Uh, if you're taking a local backup that is without streaming, uh, you can use either the tables file option or the include option of in the backup X to specify tables to be included. Tables file takes a path to a file which has a very uh, simple format. It contains uh, table specifications in the database uh, database.table form, one per line. And uh, the include option is the most flexible one. It allows you to use uh, regular expressions to specify databases and or tables. For example, this expression will include, uh, all, uh, will include all tables with names starting with reports in databases called database1 or data database2. And when using the extra backup binary directly, that is without the in the backup X wrapper, uh, you can choose between the tables, uh, t tables file option, which has absolutely the same syntax as the same option in, in the backup X. And there is also the tables option, which accepts a uh, regular expression. So it's, equi so it's equivalent to the uh, include option in the, in, in the backup X. So this, uh, these are the options that you can use to select which tables or database schemas are included in a partial backup. Now, uh, uh, preparing partial backups is not any different from uh, preparing full backups from the user perspective. Uh, just make sure to specify the export option if you're going to restore your partial backup to a different server, in which case you also need to be running per colon server. The only difference uh, is in the extra backup output. Since some tables are missing in a partial backup, extra backup warns you that uh, it's unable to find some tables so they are being removed from the data dictionary. Like in this example, I created a partial backup of the customer's table, customer table. So when preparing this backup, extra backup could not find the store table. So it was removed from the data dictionary as seen from the log. But the customer table was successfully prepared to be restored later. And since I was using the, uh, the export option, extra backup also uh, created a meta information file describing indexes in the, in the customer table. Okay, so um, as I said previously, to restore from a partial backup, you should follow absolutely the same uh, procedure as to restore individual tables from a full backup. That is, uh, for non NDB tables, such as MyISAM, you can just copy files to the database directory. And for NDB tables, if you're restoring to the standard MySQL server, you should use alter table discard table space and alter table uh, import table space statements. But the limitation, limitations are the same. It must be the same server instance where the partial backup was taken, and there must be no DDL on affected tables after taking a backup. And in case you want to restore to uh, a Percona server instance, you should use the table expert functionality of extra backup and improved import in Percona server to avoid limitations. 
So make sure you enable those features uh, with the corresponding options. Yes. Yes, if the table has if the table has no foreign key constraints, truncate table is internally mapped to drop table plus, plus create table. So, yes, it, the ID will be different, and you can restore it if you're using the standard MySQL server. You can restore it from a backup. Now, uh, let's talk about performance-related features and extra backup. Uh, one of the frequent problems with backup software is that it may sometimes have a significant overhead stealing operating system resources or hardware resources from, the, from other ap applications running on the same host. Uh, so even though extra backup is the least intrusive backup solution uh, available for MySQL, it's a whole backup tool after all, it also consumes resources like CPU cycles or disk IO capacity, or if you're um, backing up to a remote host, uh, it also may consume uh, network bandwidth. So extra backup provides a, number, a couple of features that can be used to minimize its footprint on the server where, it, where it's running, so that taking a backup doesn't slow down the MySQL ser server considerably. Uh, one of these features is IO throttling, which allows you to limit the number of IO operations per second performed by extra backup. Uh, this feature is controlled by the double dash throttle option of the extra backup binary. And the option value is specified in one megabyte units. And it works like this. Um, extra backup copies NSB, NSB files in one megabyte blocks. So this feature actually uh, limits the number of copy operations per second. When extra backup hits that limit, it suspends the file copying activity uh, until the next second. So for example, a value, of one, a value of one will make extra backup copy at most one megabyte of data every second when taking a backup, and then wait for the next second to begin to continue copying data. Another frequent problem with backup software is that it may have um, a negative impact on uh, the file system cache. Because when a backup utility copies data, the data gets cached by the operating system by default, evicting other data from the file system cache and possibly preventing it from being cached again. As a result, the file system cache may end up filled with cold data. There is the data that is, ne is never going to be accessed again after taking a backup. And um, this, this problem is also especially painful for servers with many MySM tables because MySM relies on the file system cache to cache data files. And uh, caching unnecessary data also puts uh, additional pressure on the virtual memory subsystem and may also result in swapping. So um, extra backup solves this problem by using a special system call provided by the Linux kernel, which is called POSIX F advice. Uh, when, when this system call is invoked with the POSIX FF don't need argument, it tells the kernel that the application is not going to reuse the specified range, on, range of bytes in a file, so it doesn't make sense to cache it. So extra backup uses that system call to avoid thrashing the file system cache with backup data, backup data and thus uh, slowing uh, down the MySQL server, especially MySQL tables. Now the good thing about this feature is that it's fully automatic. Uh, there is no option to enable it. It just works automatically on Linux. But a small warning, even though the, the feature has been available uh, for, quite a while, uh, for quite a while, there was a uh, bug in implementation which prevented it from working properly in extra backup 1.6, and we noticed it recently and fixed an extra backup to zero. Um, another performance-related feature in extra backup is parallel file copying, or just parallel backups, as it's called in the documentation. Uh, what it does is it makes extra backup copy multiple files concurrently, uh, rather than one by one. It works by creating the number of threads specified with the parallel option to in the backup X or extra backup. Then, after the necessary number of threads has been created, each thread is copying one file at a time. So, for example, with four parallel threads, it will be copying at most four files in parallel. So using this feature normally results in higher uh, disk hardware utilization. And the best performance improvements can be seen on SSDs, uh, which handle uh, parallel I.O. better. But it may also result in faster backups even on traditional disk drives or even on low-end uh, single-drive hardware. Because with more parallel I.O. requests, the I.O. scheduler in the kernel uh, is able to merge more requests and reduce the number of disk six. Yes? Um, is parallel copying support for streaming backups? Uh, yes, 
uh, an extra backup to zero, yes, an extra backup on six, it, it wasn't supported. Does it answer your question? Yes. Uh, yes. Tar, tar, tar streams don't support don't uh, don't support uh, concur, uh, concurrent streaming. So we had to introduce uh, another streaming format for extra uh, in extra backup to zero, which allows parallel file streaming. Um, yes. Yeah, so the the I/O scheduler in the kernel is able to merge more I requests when the parallel file copying is in action. Uh, however, it all depends on, this, on specific hardware and uh, workload, uh, workloads combination. So your mileage may vary, and uh, we recommend running some benchmarks before using this feature in production. So now I'll be talking about the new, uh, new features introduced in Extra Backup to Zero that we released about three, years, uh, three weeks ago. Uh, the major new features in that release are streaming incremental backups, uh, parallel compression, the XBStream file format and utility to manage streams in that format, and uh, LRU dump backups. So uh, one of the problems solved by extra backup to zero is uh, streaming incremental backups. And streaming backups are typically used to backup to a remote host by streaming data to SSH, for example. And you can use them in extra backup 1.6 to stream full backups to a remote host. But uh, streaming incremental backups did not work for, for the following reasons. In backup X used external utilities to generate tar streams. So in case of streaming backups, it didn't, it didn't invoke the extra backup binary. But on the other hand, uh, the extra backup binary was essential for incremental backups because it scans NSB data files to compare LSNs and generate delta files. And that's why uh, streaming, back, streaming incremental backups didn't work in extra backup 1.6. But in extra backup to zero, the extra backup binary can produce data streams on its own either in the tar format or in the, in the new streaming format, which is called XBStream. So it can also scan NSB files and stream data at the same time. So you can now create uh, st streaming incremental, uh, incremental backups in any backup mode. Another new feature in Extra Backup to Zero is built-in compression. Uh, disk space is often a problem, uh, even for our biggest customers probably because data is usually growing all the time, and it's hard to scale your hardware infrastructure to keep up with the growing uh, disk space occupied by your data set and consequently your backups. So that's why people are often looking for ways to reduce the disk space occupied by their backups, and data compression is obviously the first thing that comes to mind when you want to achieve that. Uh, you can, of course, uh, use external utilities to compress backups, produced with extra backup. But this approach has some serious limitations. I'll be talking more about them later. But those limitations uh, is the reason why we have uh, implemented a built-in compression facility in extra backup to zero. So what's the problem with using external utilities to compress backups? Well, uh, with local backups, that is when backups are stored on the same host where the server is running, your only option is to create an uncompressed backup first and then use a compression utility like gzip or bzip2 to compress backup files. Which means there must be sufficient disk space to hold an uncompressed uh, version of the backup before it will be compressed with, external, uh, with the compression utility. Which is, of course, not always the case. The whole point of creating a compressed backup might be that you don't have enough disk space, right? Another drawback of creating a local backup um, is that is that uh, essentially uh, you have to read and write your data twice. First to create, a backup, uh, to create backup files and then to compress them, to compress them, which of course may, may be a problem with large data sets. Now, uh, with streaming backups, using compression utilities to compress the output stream, uh, the output backup stream is also problematic. Uh, problem number one is that most popular compression utilities like the or bzip2 are single threaded which means they can only use a single CPU core for compression, which is, of course, quite unfortunate these days when even mobile phones have multiple CPU cores. And there, there are some alternatives, like, for example, there's a multi-threaded version of GZIP called PIGS, uh, which, can hand, which can use multiple CPU cores, but the compression is still, is still single-threaded. There's no way to uncompress a G, uh, GZIP archive with multiple CPU cores. 
And problem number two is that uh, since you are compressing the entire um, uh, the entire stream rather, rather than individual files, you have to uncompress the entire backup later, even if you only want to extract a single table from your backup, uh, which of course uh, may also be problematic in some cases. So to solve all of those problems at once, uh, we introduced built-in compression and extra backup to zero. Now, uh, both in the backup X and the extra backup binary accept the double dash compress option, and it uses the QuickLZ library to do compression. Uh, the reasons for choosing uh, that library instead of some more popular ones is that QuickLZ was designed, uh, implemented, and, and optimized to handle large data volumes efficiently. Uh, quoting their website, is the world's fastest uh, compression library, reaching more than 300 megabytes per core. And they also have some benchmark results on their website to prove that. It also provides good compression ratio. Of course, it, uh, it depends on the data, but in my tests I got about uh, eight-fold compression. Uh, the native archive, uh, archive format for the QuickLZ library is QPress, so you have to install an additional utility to uncompress, uh, to uncompress your backups. And an important uh, thing about compression and extra backup is that each file in the resulting backup is a single file QPress archive. Uh, it was implemented like that to provide more flexibility in managing backups. So, so that to restore a single table, you don't, you don't have to uncompress the entire backup to restore a single table, as you would have to do with TARGZ, for example. Another uh, cool thing about built-in compression and extra backup to zero is that it's parallel. That is, you can use multiple threads and consequently multiple CPU cores to do compression. Uh, the number of threads to use is controlled by the compress uh, threads option. You can also use uh, parallel compression in combination with parallel file copying. In this example, uh, I tell extra backup to, uh, to use uh, four file copying threads and eight compression threads. Uh, so it will copy at most four files concurrently and then use at most eight CPU cores to, to compress them. So um, let's move to another new feature in Extra Backup to Zero. It is called LRU Dump Backups. But before explaining it, uh, let me explain LRU Dumps first. It's actually a Percolon Server feature. So if you don't use Percolon Server, you might not be aware of it. Uh, and here's a brief overview. So LRU, LRU dumps is a feature available in Percolon Server. It allows you to greatly reduce the warm-up time for the NDB buffer pool after a server restart or a crash. It also happens. And uh, it works like this. Uh, NDB uh, employs the least recently used algorithm to manage pages in the buffer pool, which means the buffer pool is organized as an LRU list, hence LRU in the feature name. Uh, what the LRU dump feature does is it periodically dumps page IDs from the LRU list to a special file named IB LRU dump. Note that it doesn't dump the, the entire page contents. It only dumps page IDs, which is, uh, which is enough to locate pages and the data files later and read their contents back. So uh, the IB LRU dump file is much more uh, compact than the actual buffer pool. For example, for a 16 gigabyte buffer pool, the size of the dump file will only be around eight megabytes. So on restart, a Percolon server automatically loads IB LRU dump if present and rebuilds the buffer pool contents by fetching pages specified in the dump file. As a result, the buffer pool uh, warms up in minutes rather than hours or even days, as sometimes happens with servers with large amounts of memory and huge buffer pools. And uh, another small but extremely useful uh, improvement in extra backup to zero is that it automatically detects and includes the, the, to the backup the IB uh, LRU dump file, that is the dump file produced by the LRU dumps feature. Which means that after restoring from a backup, no matter if it's the same server instance or a different one, the buffer pool will get to absolutely the same state as it was when taking the backup in just a few minutes. Just make sure to enable the server feature so it reads and restores the buffer pool on startup. In Percolon Server 5.1, this feature is controlled by the NDB Auto LRU Dump option, and in 5.5, it, uh, it was renamed to NDB Buffer Pool Restore at Startup. Yes, um, some pointers to further reading and communication channels that you can use to talk to us. Uh, we have uh, documentation for extra backup that you can find at percona.com slash doc slash percona extra backup. It isn't perfect, but it has become a lot better during the last few months, and we are improving it all the time. 
Uh, you can find information on extra backup packages available for, for download at the corresponding section on our website. Um, we have a Google group called Percona Discussion, which is the main place to discuss all Percona software, including Percona Extra Backup. Uh, you can also find many Percona employees on the Percona IRC channel on Freenode. I'm also there, so feel free to ask questions. Um, we also use Launchpad to track extra backup bugs and manage releases. So here's the link to uh, the extra backup project on uh, Launchpad. You know, it's launchpad.net slash Percona extra backup. And there's also a direct link to the bug reports section. If, it, if you think you found a bug in extra backup, please let us know. Uh, yes, a couple of general information slides. First of all, Percona is hiring. We are looking for consultants, uh, support engineers, and software developers. So if you're interested, you can visit the, this link for more information. And um, I'd like to let you know that the next conference in the Percona Live series uh, will take place in New York in October 1st and October uh, 2nd. Percona Live uh, conference, uh, conferences are technical summits focused on MySQL. And the call for papers is, called, uh, is open now. So if you feel interested in participating either as a visitor or as a speaker, you can get more information by visiting percona.com slash live. Any questions on extra backup in general? Regarding the throttle, um, the throttle up, mm -hmm. so only one fun. megabyte per second. Is this, um, at the first 10 milliseconds, you write this one megabyte and then you do nothing until the second is done? Uh, yes. Or do you spread it over the second? No, it just, it just does one copy operation uh, and then it waits for the next second. Okay. If it takes just one millisecond, then. Uh, yes? Migration from 1.6 to, to 0, uh, is there, uh, are there any problems now? No, they're, uh, uh, they're fully compatible from the, uh, you know, from the interface point of view. If you, don't, if, you, uh, if you don't need new features, then your previous scripts to automate extra backup will just work with extra backup to zero. Yes? Um, you said uh, table restore is mm -hmm. for MySQL, for the formality, only available uh, if I use it on the same server. Yes. Um, would it also work if I start a new server from scratch when I build up my new server? No, it must be the same uh, the same server instance, so that uh, the uh, IDs in the data dictionary uh, in the data dictionary must be the same. And if you start a new server instance from scratch, uh, then most likely the IDs will be different, so it it won't be able to import your uh, table from the backup. That's the limitation. I think MariaDB has imported this functionality, so it's also available. It must be available in MariaDB too. We also plan some enterprise management, web GUI, whatever stuff. Uh, if you have uh, several uh, Percona or MySQL installations, because currently this is everything, okay, it's a shell tool that I can use, but it's um, for a bunch of service, several hundred services. It's, um, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, no, we don't currently have any plans to provide any, you know, automation tools around extra backup, but we rely on third parties to, to build them. And in fact, there are multiple, well, there's at least uh, one project that's worth taking a look at. Uh, it's called Extra Backup Manager, and it's developed by a Facebook employee. It, it, does, it, it provides automation scripting around extra backup, like doing backups on a schedule, or um, implementing a specific backup rotation uh, rotation strategy, stuff like that. So, I don't I don't think it has a GUI, but it's written in PHP, so maybe it does provide some you know some GUI f functionality. Yes. Just want to praise the product because we're using it to make up um, thing of mm. That's good to know. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. No more questions? Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Alexei. Um, now we have a lunch break until 2 o'clock. And uh, next talk in this room.